Hey guys, what's up? I'm John Merritt from BornToProduce.com. We are a Steinberg certified training center, and in this lesson, you're gonna learn what compression is and how and when you'd want to use it in your tracks. So compression along with EQ is one of the fundamental tools you need to make good music. In order to use it effectively, you need to understand what it does and how it works. So let's clear that up. The most basic description of a compressor is that it's an automatic volume control. And the only volume controlling it does is literally it just turns stuff down. It doesn't turn anything up, it does not do anything magical, it only turns things down. So how you make things sound fatter or more punchy is to do with the way in which the compressor turns the amplitude of the audio signal down. So that is to do mainly sort of to make it punchy or fatter or whatever is to do with the attack and release controls, which we'll get to in a bit. But first, let's understand the two most fundamental controls of the compressor, which is the threshold and the ratio. So all you're doing with the threshold is literally setting the level where the compressor starts turning the audio signal down. If the audio signal stays below the threshold that you've set, then it will remain completely unaffected. The moment the audio signal goes over the threshold, the compressor will kick in and it will turn the signal down. So you can sort of imagine the threshold like an imaginary line which goes across the audio, and if I have it all the way up, it's all the way up to the top and it's not going to be doing anything to the audio signal. And if I bring the threshold down, then Whenever the signal goes over the threshold, like it would there, then that bit of audio signal will be compressed, will be uh, turned down in volume. And the ratio setting tells the compressor how much it should be turning the signal down when it's gone over the threshold. So, for example, if you have a ratio of 2 to 1, then it will reduce the signal by half, 50%. If you set it to 4 to 1, it will reduce it by a factor of 4, which is, but it will reduce it by 75% in volume. Now this is why you use compression to level out the dynamics of a recorded performance. So each note or each word sung is around the same sort of volume level, making it very consistent. Obviously with a recorded bit of audio, the, the volume level of each note or each word is going to be sort of all over the place. So using compression, you basically even all of that out, which in turn makes it sound fatter and fuller and makes it much easier to mix with other elements in your track. So I've just made two audio examples to show my point here. So on top we've got the uncompressed vocal signal and on the bottom we've got the compressed vocal signal. Now you can see that these sort of quieter bits, these bits are remain pretty much unaffected or they, they're you know, roughly around the same sort of volume level as the original. But then when it gets to these louder peaks, especially if we sort of really see it on this part here, you can see that the audio signal has been like really leveled out. So that's ex that's all the compressor is doing. It's literally leaving the quieter bits alone and then reducing the volume of the louder audio signal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is compression in a nutshell. But before we move on, if this video has been helpful to you, please do like the video and also subscribe and hit the alert button so you get the latest music production techniques as soon as they become available. It really helps us out. Thank you. Okay, so now that we know what the threshold and ratio are responsible for, let's quickly look at the attack and release. So all the attack setting does is it lets some of the signal through before it gets turned down by the compressor. And that's how it makes things sound more punchy. It basically just lets through a bit of the louder signal and then it quickly turns it down, making it seem like the sort of sound has much more punch. So let's look at it on this kick. So. So first off, I've set the threshold very low and the ratio so it's reducing the signal uh, much like it was with the vocal, so it's quite a heavy bit of compression, more than you would normally use, but it's just for example's sake. And I've set the release, I want to set the release very quickly with this, otherwise it uh, won't have the desired effects when I put the attack on. We'll get to the release in a bit. And then as I let it play, I'll literally just add in a little bit of attack. So straight away you can hear that it has way more punch. And again, this is literally just because it's letting just a little bit of the original signal through before it's then compressing it quite a lot. So that's how the attack works. Now release is how long the compressor takes to stop reducing the volume of the signal after the signal has dropped back below the threshold level. So with a higher release, even after the signal has fallen below the threshold level, the audio signal carry on being reduced in volume for a set amount of time. Obviously that depends on your release time, 10 milliseconds or you know whatever it is you set the release to. 
you can use this to control the tail of whatever it is that you're compressing. So by having a longer release, obviously it's going to be compressing for longer. It's going to be turning things down for longer. So you're going to shorten the tail, say on the kick, for example. And by having very little release or almost no release, you'll basically let that uh, sort of carry on until its natural sort of end. Now, very generally speaking, you'll usually want more of a quicker release time in most production tasks. However, when you're sidechaining something like the kick to the baseline or using the compressor, a sidechain compressor to duck a backing track on a YouTube video or on the radio when you're talking, for example, you will then use the release to tune when you want the baseline or the backing track to raise back up to its normal volume. Now I've done a whole video on side chaining which I'll link to below but I will just quickly show you an improvement that has been implemented in Cubase 10 as this is not in the other video uh, and that is setting up a side chain is now even easier than it was before and can be done inside the compressor. So as normal you activate the side chain and then new in Cubase 10 is this little drop down arrow so you click on that click sidechain input and then let's just pretend that this is this compressor's on my baseline for example uh, and I want to use the snare as the trigger for the compressor so I just select the snare and then what it's done is it's automatically already set up a send on the snare track and routed it through to the sidechain input of this compressor so now it's just really easy to set up sidechain compression in Cubase. So these are really the four main dials in the compressor that you really want to know about and that's the same across all compressors some compressors might not even have an attack um, most of them have a release uh, but they all have a threshold and a ratio um, but you know generally these days they come with lots of extra control so let's have a quick look at the other ones so you've got on the ratio a couple of extra buttons as well you've got soft knee or hard knee if you want to if you leave it deactivated it's basically a hard knee uh, and that means if it's deactivated the signal above the threshold is compressed instantly if you have soft knee activated then the compressor sort of comes on more uh, gradually or gently and this is generally what sort of old vintage compressors were sort of known to have soft knees sort of thing so the high button just sets a high ratio of 20 to 1 now the actual uh, ratio knob only goes up to 8 to 1 so if you want almost like basically like a limiter almost then you could just hit high and then you've got 20 to 1 ratio right there so on release you have this auto release button uh, and it basically just means that Cubase will decide what the sort of best settings for release are. Uh, it's not too bad, it does work for most things, but most of the time it's sort of unnecessary. You can just choose your release pretty easily, but it can be helpful occasionally. So tied in with the release control is the hold control. So the where the release uh, keeps the compressor compressing stuff, keeps it turning down things even after the signals drop below the threshold, the hold basically does the same thing, although it will just hold this hold the compressor on. Um, for the desired amount of millisecond time that you pick and then the release will come in so it just lengthens the release really it's that's sort of what it does so the analysis button never ever i never ever change this particularly um but what it means basically is it determines whether the input signal is analyzed according to peak or rms values obviously if you have it all the way to peak it will only uh, look at the peak values of the audio if you have it all the way to rms it'll only look at the rms values so what it's supposed to basically do is uh, RMS mode is supposed to work better on material with fewer transients such as vocals and peak mode works better for percussive material with a lot of transient peaks. But really I've never had any call to actually sort of change that. Now the makeup gain is an important part of a compressor because obviously as I've been talking about and banging on endlessly the compressor literally just turns everything down. So what you're going to need to do once you've obviously turned all, all this stuff down to sort of level it out you then need to turn everything the whole lot back up so this is basically just the a volume for the output of the compressor uh, and you've got also an auto gain function which is usually pretty good um, to also make up gain so you can turn that on but a very necessary part of the compressor just to get everything back up to the correct level and then of course dry mix that's pretty self-explanatory at the moment with zero it means it's just everything's 100% going through the compressor and whatever the compressed signal is that's coming out is exactly what you're hearing. If you mix in the dry signal, then you're gonna mix in the original signal, the uncompressed signal. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. If it has been helpful to you, please do like, subscribe, and hit the alert button for more tips and tricks. And don't forget that we have a, a full five hour course on pure mixing EDM skills. It's jam packed with everything you need to know from getting the perfect lower mix to getting your vocal to sound big in your mix it's a huge course packed from start to finish with up-to-date production skills thanks for watching